There are literally millions of asteroids in our solar system, and surprisingly there are also many different types. They are not just found in the asteroid belt, but they are, in reality, darting all around our solar system. My name is Scott Manley and you're watching Astrum, and today we are going to discuss some of the most interesting asteroids we've discovered so far. But what exactly is an asteroid? And what's the difference between an asteroid and a comet? Well, an asteroid is a minor planet, or a small solar system body. A minor planet is an astronomical term for a small solar system body which is not outgassing. They're generally rocky or metallic, but may contain volatile compounds underneath the surface protected from sunlight. Comets, on the other hand, have these volatile materials near the surface and when they are heated by the solar radiation, they produce coma and tails. This distinction between asteroids and comets has existed for over a century. However, the lines are a lot more blurred than we've first thought. The level of activity from a body is largely dependent upon its distance from the Sun. Objects which exist far beyond the orbits of Neptune are inert all year round, but if they were to be brought in close to the Sun, they would turn into comets. So just keep that in mind while watching. In this video we will only talk of asteroids which have orbits in the inner solar system, or in other words, between the Sun and Jupiter. Not all asteroids are the same. There's obviously a difference in size, from dust particles all the way up to the biggest known asteroid, which is almost 1,000 kilometers in diameter. Asteroids are also classified based upon their spectrum or color, which often indicates what the asteroid is made of. There are three main spectral categories that most asteroids fall into. There are the C group, which are dark carbonaceous asteroids the S-type, which are stony or silicaceous asteroids, and the M-types, which are metallic asteroids. There are other types too, but these are the three main categories. We might mention some of these as the video progresses, but they are basically variations on these three groups that I just mentioned. Now, let's count down the top 10 most interesting asteroids. 2005 VX3 is the minor planet with the largest aphelion that we know of. At its closest approach to the Sun, it's only 4.1 AU away, which is inside the orbit of Jupiter, but when it's furthest away, it has a massive estimated heliocentric distance of 3000 AU from the Sun. Because of this, it is estimated to have the largest orbital eccentricity of any known minor planet. The last time it was seen was January 2006 when it came to perihelion, and it probably won't be seen again for another 30 to 40 thousand years. It could well be a dormant comet that is not seen outgassing. It may have made closer approaches to the Sun in the past which would have removed most of the volatile icy materials, hence why it has no tail and why we don't recognize it as a comet. It is estimated to be about 7 kilometers in diameter. Number 9. 99942 Apophis is a near-Earth asteroid which caused a bit of a stir in December 2004 because the initial observations indicated a probability of about 2.7% that it would hit the Earth on April 13th, 2029. Not to worry, however, as additional observations improved this asteroid predicted orbit which eliminated the chance of collision in 2029. However, the possibility remains that during this very close encounter with Earth, Apopsis could pass through what's called a gravitational keyhole, a small region of no more than about 800 meters wide, that would alter its orbit sufficiently to put it on a future impact scenario exactly seven years later in 2036. This possibility kept it at level 1 in the Torino impact scale until August 2006 when the probability that Apophis would pass through this keyhole was determined to be very small. Now at this point in time, the possibility has effectively been ruled out. Apophis did however set the record for highest rating on the Torino scale, reaching a level 4 at one point. Had it hit Earth, the estimated kinetic energy would have been about 750 megatons, 13 times more powerful than the largest hydrogen bomb ever exploded. Apophis is a stony S-type asteroid. The most recent observation of it in 2013 estimated the asteroid to be about 325 meters across. Interestingly, an asteroid the size of Apophis is expected to hit Earth about every 80,000 years on average. 
let's hope the next one isn't too soon. Number 8. 25143 Itokawa. This is a Mars crossing asteroid. In other words, it crosses inside the orbit of Mars. It was the first asteroid to be the target of a sample return mission, accomplished by this Japanese space probe Hayabusa. And this is the smallest asteroid ever to be photographed by a spacecraft, being only 500 meters across at its longest point. It is an S-type asteroid, but it may be a contact binary. That means it would effectively be two separate asteroids which have merged over time. It has very little in the way of impact craters and is covered in boulders, described by the mission team as a giant rubble pile. They estimate its average density to be about 1.8 grams per cubic centimeter, which means it can't possibly be solid rock, but more like fragments of gravel that have built up over time. Interestingly, its gravity wasn't strong enough to enable the space probe to go into orbit around it. Instead, they parked the space probe next to the asteroid and orbited the Sun alongside it. In 2010, they landed on the asteroid and successfully returned dust samples from its surface to Earth. Number 7. Pallas. Pallas is the second asteroid to have been discovered after Ceres. When astronomers were looking for Ceres again after its initial discovery in the early 1800s, they accidentally found Pallas instead, which coincidentally was near Ceres at the time. When Pallas was discovered, it was counted as a planet, as were other asteroids in the early 19th century. The discovery of many more asteroids after 1845 led to their reclassification as minor planets. Pallas is one of the largest asteroids in the solar system. It is estimated that it comprises 7% of the mass of the asteroid belt, and its diameter of 544 kilometers is slightly larger than that of Vesta. But it is about 10 to 30% less massive than Vesta, placing it third amongst the known asteroids in terms of mass. Pallas is a C-group asteroid, which means it has a very low albedo, giving it a dark surface that reflects only 4% of the light falling on it. That's the equivalent of fresh asphalt. At its brightest, it may be visible with binoculars, but not with the naked eye. The Palladian orbit is inclined at 34.8 degrees to the plane of the solar system, meaning that it's practically inaccessible to any spacecraft which might want to rendezvous and investigate its slope more closely. Number 6. 10199 Charco. Now this asteroid technically shouldn't be on this list, but we had to include it due to its remarkable ring system. The reason it shouldn't be on this list is because it's what we call a centaur, a minor planet that orbits within the orbits of outer planets, in this case Uranus and Saturn. It is the largest known centaur, being over 300 kilometers in diameter. And like I mentioned, it has a ring system, much like on Saturn, but just on a much smaller scale. In 2013, it was discovered that it has two rings, one seven and the other three kilometers wide, both being about nine kilometers apart. It is the smallest known object to ever have rings. In fact, because it's so small, these rings shouldn't be stable at all. Either they are actively contained by shepherd moons, or they will slowly wane and disperse over the next few million years. Number five, Lutetia. Lutetia is a large M-type asteroid. It has a retrograde rotation and is found in the asteroid belt. It measures about 100 kilometers in diameter and has one of the greatest densities of any asteroid observed. Its average density is estimated to be about 3.4 grams per cubic centimeter, meaning that it must be made of metal-rich rock. But rather bizarrely, there is little evidence of metal on the surface and its color resembles more a C-group carbonaceous asteroid. Due to the density, though, we know that it must indeed have metals contained within it, and it is speculated that the metal-rich core of the asteroid is surrounded by a 3 km thick layer of dust and rubble we call regolith. This theory is backed up by the way that impact craters on the surface have softened outlines. Letitia has an irregular shape and is heavily cratered, with the largest impact crater reaching 45 km in diameter. Number 4 433 Eros is an S-type asteroid approximately 34 kilometers long, and it is the second largest near-Earth asteroid after 1036 Ganymede. Eros is a Mars-crossing asteroid, and it was the first asteroid known to do so. Objects of this kind's orbit can remain there only for a few hundred million years before the orbit is perturbed by the gravity of Mars. 
Eros may evolve into an Earth crosser with as short interval as 2 million years, and apparently has roughly 50% chance of doing so in the time scale of about 100 years, which means it will eventually become a potential Earth impactor, comparable in size to the impactor that created the Chicxulub crater that led to the extinction of the dinosaurs, the equivalent of a 100 teraton weapon. The Near Shoemaker probe visited Eros in 1998 and 2000, finishing its mission by actually landing there on the surface. It was not designed to be a lander. And if that doesn't get you interested in Eros, the data collected suggested that it contains about 20 billion tons of rare metals such as gold and platinum. Number 3. 243 Ida it is a stony S-type asteroid found in the asteroid belt. In 1993, Ida was visited by the spacecraft Galileo as it was bound for Jupiter. Ida has an average diameter of 31.4 kilometers, and it is irregularly shaped and elongated, apparently composed of two large objects connected together. Its surface is one of the most heavily cratered in the solar system. Its density is about on average for an asteroid at about 2.6 grams per cubic centimetre. Unlike all asteroids, it has very weak gravity. Theoretically, you could jump from one end of the asteroid to the other in one go. If you exceeded 20 metres per second, you could actually escape the asteroid's gravity altogether. But what is most fascinating about Ida is its moon, Dactyl. Being only 1.4 kilometers in diameter, it is about 1 20th of the size of Ida. It was named after the Dactyls, creatures which inhabited Mount Ida in Greek mythology. Dactyl and Ida share many characteristics, which imply they came from the same place. We know of other asteroids which have moons, but Ida is the only one that we have high definition imagery of. Number 2. Vesta Vesta is the second most massive object in the asteroid belt after the dwarf planet Ceres, with a mean diameter of 525 kilometers. Vesta is the last remaining rocky protoplanet, which means that it has a differentiated interior similar to the ones formed by the terrestrial planets. Numerous fragments of Vesta were ejected by collisions billions of years ago, and these left two enormous craters occupying much of Vesta's southern hemisphere. Debris from the impact has since fallen to Earth as Howardite, Eucrite, Diogenite meteors, which have a valuable source of information about Vesta. Other fragments stayed in a similar orbit to Vesta, and there are so many of them that, along with Vesta, they have been given their own class of asteroid, the V-type. Vesta is the brightest asteroid visible from Earth. It also has the tallest mountain in the solar system, called Rhea Silvia. NASA's Dawn spacecraft entered orbit around Vesta in 2011 for a one-year exploration. There is now a huge amount of data on this asteroid, and researchers are still sifting through this data three years after Dawn left. Number 1. Ceres And finally, the only dwarf planet in the asteroid belt. Ceres for many years was considered a planet due to its size, which is about 960 kilometers in diameter. Composed of rock and ice, Ceres is estimated to make up about one-third of the mass of the entire asteroid belt. It is so big, it is the only asteroid rounded by its own gravity, but even though it was the biggest asteroid, in planetary terms it is still rather small. Our moon, in comparison, is huge. It is believed that Ceres has a rocky core and icy crust, and may have a remnant internal ocean of liquid water under a layer of ice. It is carbonaceous C-type asteroid, meaning that the surface is probably a mixture of water ice and carbonates and clay. Emissions of water vapour have been detected from Ceres. This was unexpected, as asteroids in the asteroid belt do not usually give off vapour, as that's more like a comet. The NASA spacecraft Dawn entered orbit around Ceres in 2015 after finishing its mission around Vesta. Two distinct bright spots inside a crater appeared on the surface in imagery sent back by Dawn. The spots are likely to be highly reflective materials containing ice or salts. NASA then released a higher resolution image showing that instead of one or two spots, there are actually several. Well, thanks for watching this far. I hope you've learned something today about asteroids and that they've fueled your interest to go out and find more about them. 
I've only mentioned 10 today, but there are so many more to discover for yourself. We can delve deeper into Vesta and Ceres as we've only just scratched the surface of them in this video. So if you want more videos about space, be sure to subscribe to Astrum. And also check out my channel where I do my best to combine science and video games at the same time. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.